Right now, we're going to bring in Joel Rubin. He's a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. So, Joel, give it to us straight. What is Turkey doing? What is Russia doing? Yeah, Arthel, uh, Turkey is about to engage in ethnic cleansing, and Russia is backing them up. And it's really tragic because we had our foot on the, the, the neck, essentially, of ISIS. We had defeated them. And now Donald Trump has taken it off. And I, I understand why he, he claims he wants to bring our troops home. But as you're hearing from this report as well, our troops aren't coming home. They're going to Iraq. They're staying in Syria. And Turkey now feels a free reign to engage in massacring our Kurdish allies who helped us defeat ISIS. And uh, it's a real tragedy right now. Yeah, and it, the, the, the troops that went to Iraq, Iraq saying, you didn't ask me if we can come over there. You bring your troops over there. That's so right. you've got one month to get them out of here. So it's a big mess. Meanwhile, I want to tweet, uh, show you a tweet from Brett McGurk. He is the uh, former special presidential envoy to the Middle East, as you know, uh, to defeat ISIS. He worked under Presidents Bush, Obama, and Trump. Here is his tweet. Syria, last 24 hours, U.S. military returns in force from Iraq to guard oil fields. Thousands of refugees stream in other direction into northern Iraq. Erdogan threatens again to do the cleansing work in Kurdish areas. U.S. forces left to Russia and Assad. Incoherent. So, Joel, has um, President Trump relinquished all U.S. power to combat or offset the rapid damage being done by Erdogan? and Putin? He, he has. I, I have to say it straight like you asked. He absolutely has. And uh, he compounded it not just by giving the green light to Erdogan to invade northern Syria and have our troops who were acting as a buffer. They were peacekeepers. They were not engaged in active combat. Uh, to, when he removed them, he gave the green light to, to Turkey. But even this week, he falsely claimed that the ceasefire was holding and that he would therefore relax and, and take away American sanctions on Turkey, thereby essentially telling Erdogan, you're free to go and free to do what you want. And now Erdogan made a deal with Russia. Russia is the big power. And at a strategic level, that means that now we'd have to take on Russia to get back in. And that's not going to happen. So we really have very few levers right now to influence what's happening on the ground. Meanwhile, President uh, Trump is saying that U.S. troops will go back in to protect the oil fields in eastern Syria. Um, how many right. troops would really be needed for this? And will they try to reenlist help from the SDF Kurds? This is highly debatable, and this is the danger with the way that the president uh, enacted this policy. Uh, he did not plan it out. There was no interagency process with the DOD to go and secure oil fields. So uh, now they're going in, but it's not even clear that that's a big priority, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, oil fields in the past, they were used to fund ISIS. Then we destroyed them through air raids. It's not quite sure what the actual purpose is. Uh, he may find it attractive. There are others who want us to creep back in and think that that's a way to begin to do that. But from a policy perspective, the oil fields are very uh, insignificant, quite frankly, certainly to our oil uh, use here at home. The big issue is Turkey's incursion now into an ethnic cleansing operation against the Kurds and Russia's stronghold right there. Those are the big issues that we're not grappling with and that we should be. So, so far, you've got 900 square miles that, that have been seen by Turkish and Russian forces, 160,000 Kurdish civilians have been displaced. So will the Kurds, mm -hmm. all divisions, be slaughtered, or is there really a deal with the devil that can save them? Well, the Kurds thought they had a deal with the devil, and that devil being uh, Assad of Syria. And they thought he would provide protection, but that protection hasn't come. Uh, Russia controls Assad. Will Russia step in and potentially protect them? But the, the big question hovering over all of this is then what? What about the three and a half million Syrians sitting in southern Turkey? Will they be pushed into those cleared areas, creating a, a violation of the Geneva Conventions of a, a mass population transfer in the process? None of these are addressed. Uh, we need to have a, a robust, frankly, a robust international diplomatic discussion now with urgency to ensure that these issues get discussed and resolved. Uh, but at that time was before we left. We still have to try to do it. But those are the issues right now that, that are very serious. And yes, I think an ethnic cleansing is very much in the offing, potentially, from Turkey. Finally, Joel, what about ISIS? Will ISIS re regroup again? Not necessarily as a caliphate, but enough to seriously threaten the U.S. and European allies. 
So think of it, if you're the Kurds who have been fighting ISIS and they lost 11,000 plus soldiers at our request when they combated ISIS fighters, uh, they were the ones protecting and guarding against ISIS. Now they're defending their, for their lives. They're protecting their families. ISIS is the last thing on their mind. And we also have many problems with Turkey related to ISIS over the years in that the Turks did not view ISIS as their threat. They viewed Kurdish militias as their threat. So the Turks are going to go after the Kurdish militias and ISIS. They're not going to be guarded by the Kurds. So what happens then? We have ISIS free. And they're not just, quote, over there. Joel Rubin, we have to leave it there. Thank you no. very much for your analysis.